So what's going on guys, it's JM, it's Feetboxing, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel before you click on to any of my videos. Also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions of what I'm saying in any of my videos. Like always it is appreciated if you guys could drop me a quick sub or two on my channel. So after we've all been caught up in the main event between Kelbrook and Ewell Spence, everyone has been keeping a very close eye on that fight. But people have been forgetting that we've got a pretty good undercard tomorrow as well. And starting this undercard off for this pay-per-view bill is the Olympians. You've got guys like Joe Cordino, Anthony Fowler making his professional debut. And Lawrence Okoli having his third or fourth fight as a professional. Not really too much to talk about with these fights. They're just fighting journeymen. Basically breaking themselves into the pro game. Just learning fights for these guys. They're expected to win the fights pretty easily. But Anthony Fowler is a fighter. I'm going to be keeping my eye on because he was a very good amateur, Anthony Fowler. Lawrence Acoli and Joe Cordina was as well, but Anthony Fowler had a style that was pretty exciting as an amateur. And I think it would take very well to the pro game and he could be a future big star in British boxing. So yeah, I'm going to keep my eye on him. And also you've got Jamie Cox tomorrow night having his first fight since signing with Eddie Hearn in match room. He's fighting Lewis Taylor, who's a domestic level fighter and is for the WBA Intercontinental Super Middleweight title and I'm expecting Jamie Cox to win this fight pretty convincingly Jamie Cox is a fighter whose career has been very on and off due to injuries and problems outside of the ring but he seemed to make a turn in his career right now he's signed with Eddie Hearn Eddie Hearn's trying to get him on a path to become a real big name in the Super Middleweight division so he could fight guys like George Groves and Callum Smith and Chris Eubank Jr. And Jamie Cox just has an ear about him. Like I don't know what it is, but he just seems like the kind of guy who will get in the ring with anyone. He just looks like an old bastard. <laughs> He's the kind of guy you'd see outside of a nightclub with a donkey jacket on being the bouncer. Like He just looks like a bouncer, don't he, Jamie Cox? You can just imagine him there with a donkey jacket on, standing outside of a nightclub, checking IDs and throwing fuckers out and stuff like that. So, yeah, very interesting tomorrow night to see how Jamie Cox gets on. Because he hits very hard, Jamie Cox. If he could win this fight with a knockout, then that would be a big step in his career going forward. And it's a statement to all the other super middleweights out there saying, look, I'm for real. This power is for real. If you want it, then I'm here. So, yeah, I'm expecting Jamie Cox to win this fight. Also on the undercard, you've got Dave Allen fighting Lenroy Thomas for the vacant Commonwealth heavyweight title and Dave Allen like what can you say about Dave Allen he's just a funny guy a guy who the British public have taken to like the British public love a lovable loser and that's what Dave Allen has came across as but he's a guy who's picked his career up he's taken it a little bit more serious now he's had two wins over low level opposition but he's stepping in here in his biggest fight to date against Lenroy Thomas, who is a fighter who's fought guys like Dominic Basile when he fought the Russian heavyweight. I can't remember the guy's name. I'll probably remember it after this video, but yeah, he got knocked out in both of them fights. And he's one of these guys, Lenroy Thomas. He'll be competitive for two or three rounds, but if it starts getting on top and tough for him, it'll one out. And I expect Dave Allen to try put it on him and try and get him out of there, try and make him quit. Or something like that. So yeah. I hope Dave Allen wins this fight tomorrow night. And I hope everyone else thinks that as well. Because Dave Allen is the kind of fighter. That will never change. He's just the way he is. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And there'll be 25,000 people cheering. If Dave Allen wins the Commonwealth Heavyweight title tomorrow night. And it will mean a lot for somebody like Dave Allen. Who's had problems outside of the ring. With personal problems in his life. So, yeah, I hope Dave Allen gets a victory here, but Lenroy Thomas, he will be competitive, and he looks like he's came to win, he's, he looks like a pretty big guy as well, so Dave Allen will have to be on his A game, and he'll really need to try and put it on Lenroy Thomas, so yeah, that's that fight, Katie Taylor is not on tomorrow night, so I'm guessing we won't be able to have a piss break, <laughs> nah, no, nah, we won't be able to have a piss break tomorrow night, fucking hell. No, no, Katie Taylor. I like Katie Taylor. She's a good fighter, but yeah, it's not really uh, everyone's cup of tea, is she? But yeah, she's not on the bill tomorrow night, so we'll probably go straight into this fight. George Groves fighting Fedor Trudinov 
for the WBA super middleweight title. This is George Groves' fourth attempt at a world title. And what can you say? George Groves has always been a fighter who looks like he's had it. But then when it comes to delivering it, he just doesn't do it. Like we saw it when he fought Carl Froch. First fight looked fantastic. Looked like he was on cru looked like he was cruising his way to victory. The way he knocked Carl Froch down in the first round, like Carl Froch had no chin or something. Like he just put Carl Froch down. And then Carl Froch obviously typical Carl Froch came back into the fight, started getting into it more. And the fight was controversially stopped in the ninth round. And then he fought him in a rematch, George Groves, and was knocked out in eight rounds. And then he had a few rebuilding fights, fought Badu Jack for the WBC super middleweight title. And in that fight, George Groves, I don't know, I think he came into that fight with the wrong mentality. He just thought he couldn't lose against Badu Jack. He came into that fight a little bit arrogant. Like, it was just a foregone conclusion. But then he went in there with Badu Jack, and Badu Jack stunned him in the first round, knocking him down. And then basically George Groves was just playing catch up the whole fight after that and he did make the fight pretty close but he lost a split decision. Obviously he's going to lose a split decision in the States. But I had Badu Jack winning that fight by a round or two anyway. Some people had George Groves but I had Badu Jack with a knockdown and everything taking that fight just. So he went on and fought guys like Martin Murray and Edward Gutterneck who tragically fell into a coma after his fight with George Groves and has never really recovered since. Is still pretty injured right now and has severe brain problems. And when George Groves was asked about that yesterday by Coogan Cassius on IFL TV, he said to Coogan Cassius, look, I'm not being funny here, but I don't want to talk about that. So a lot of people are saying it's still playing on George Groves' mind because we've seen it in the past when Chris Eubank Jr. fought Michael Watson in their rematch and... When he knocked Michael Watson down and obviously we all know what happened after that. Michael Watson banged his head and suffered severe brain damage. And Chris Eubank Jr. just kind of lost his killer instinct after that fight. He just, I don't know, he just never looked the same kind of fighter when it came to the killer instinct. Like early on in his career before all of that, Chris Eubank Jr. was knocking guys out left, right and centre. But against, well after Michael Watson, he just... Didn't look the same against other guys and stuff like that. He just didn't look the same kind of fighter. And the same with Mike Perez as well. Mike Perez, um, oh, I can't remember the guy's name and I'm sorry because I don't remember the guy's name. But he ended up giving a fighter a severe brain damage in a fight. And he openly admitted that affected him. He was drinking after that and stuff like that. And... Yeah, it affects fighters in different ways. Sergei Kovalev killed a guy in the ring. And then he went out and in his next fight knocked his next eight opponents out. So Sergei Kovalev came across as a very cold guy. Like, obviously he was upset at the time, but he just got on with it. He looked like it didn't affect him at all. Like, affect his boxing especially. And it'll be interesting to see how George Groves gets on against Fedor Chudinov. I think George Groves, if he can... I don't know, whip that jab out on Fedor Chudinov because Fedor Chudinov is a pretty methodical fighter. He's the kind of fighter who just likes to come forward, high guard, does very methodical things, likes to put pressure on his opponents and stuff like that. So George Groves would have to keep him at bay with that jab and try and keep him off with some power shots as well. George Groves is very good at breaking guys down and he's the bigger guy in the fight. So it'll be interesting to see how he can break Fedor Chudinov down, if he can break him down because Fedor Chudinov... I don't know, could be a banana skin here for George Groves. He can hit pretty hard, Fedor Chudinov. I think he's got like 14 wins with like 10 knockouts. So he's not feather fisted at all, Fedor Chudinov. And we've seen George Groves in the past, like his punch resistance is a little bit... Mm, it's just like when you after that knockout against Carl Froch and you watch George Groves get hit clean on the chin, you're like... Mm, like You just never know where George Groves is now. Like This was a guy who was rocked by Christopher Abras for the European title and Christopher Rabras isn't a hard puncher so it'll be interesting to see how George Groves react if he gets hit clean against Fedor Chudinov and I expect him to be I expect him to be hit clean against Fedor Chudinov because George Groves defence isn't always the best so yeah this is this on the card for tomorrow night Kelbrook, Errol Spence comment below in the comment section do you guys think this is a good undercard what's your predictions for the fights just comment below in the comment section, it's JM, it's Speedboxing.